12. This is the man-made version of the Northern Lights, folks. They call it Sky Dome. This year, yet another four million fans can attest to the splendor of this incredible theme park complex restaurant, and you can check into a hotel. And there, in the heart of this high-tech jewel, is a diamond where tonight, the American League's most sparkling teams, the Oakland A's and the Toronto Blue Jays, begin their quest to check into a trip to the World Series. Game one of the American League Championship Series. And hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. Welcome to our CBS Sports continuing coverage of the League Championship Series. Tonight, it's game one in the American League, the A's and the Jays, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But first, as we fire up our Baseball 92 postseason scoreboard, earlier today in game two of the National League Championship Series, it was the Atlanta Braves over the Pittsburgh Pirates, 13 to 5, and so now the Braves take a two games to none lead as the action shifts to Three Rivers Stadium. We'll have highlights and hear from Tim McCarver a little later on. Right now, let's turn our attention to the ALCS, where we'll see a pair of veteran right-handers hurling tonight. Oakland's Dave Stewart and Jack Morris for Toronto. One's got a stare, the other a glare, but more importantly, each has a history of delivering clutch postseason performances. Another way of saying they get the job done. And speaking of getting it done, let's go to Sky Dome and get the latest from Dick Stockton. Well, I'm here with the Blue Jays manager, Cito Gaston, and it's getting to be a habit to see him in the LCS. Your team is favored in this series, and it's because of your outstanding starting pitching, among other things. But what about the A's worries you, Cito? Well, they, had, they do have a veteran team, and they've been through this uh, a lot more times than we have. And, uh, of course, to, just don't want to overlook that, that uh, uh, the fact that they have uh, classified us as the favorite probably upsets them a little bit, and they, they're probably going to play a little bit harder than they normally would play. What about the influence of Ricky Henderson, who had a terrific series against you in 89, and the base-stealing possibilities that he presents? Well, one thing we have to do is keep him off base, because, uh, you know, he can cause a lot of problems out there, and uh, I guess if we can't throw him out going a second, we just throw the ball to third and hope that he's sliding in the third by the time he gets there. Okay, business as usual for you, Sudo. Cito, good luck. Oh, yeah, thank All you. Right. Cito Gaston, and now for the other side of the story, let's go to my partner, Jim Cott. Thanks, Dick. Visiting with Oakland manager Tony La Russa. And Tony, in tonight's game, we've got a great matchup in Dave Stewart and Jack Morris. Two pitchers who tend to struggle a little bit early on. Might that affect the way you play early to try to hit and run or steal more? Well, we're going to look for any opportunity we can, and they know it. So, you know, there's ways to defend that, Jim. But I think with uh, whether it's Morris early, middle, or late, you can happen to get on base. Uh, if you stand around waiting all the time for a couple of hits to score or a big extra base bomb, you're not going to score much. So we're going to push wherever we can. All right, thanks, Tony. For more on tonight's pitchers, let's go to Leslie Visser. Thanks, Jim. As you know, two of baseball's fiercest pitchers will oppose each other on the mound tonight. Jack Morris, of course, was the MVP of last year's World Series. He got the job done in both Detroit and Minnesota. He thinks he hit the jackpot here. I think it's probably the most talented team I've played on. Um, up and down the lineup, through the bullpen, the depth of the pitching staff. Uh, it's tough to, for me to say that I've ever played on a more talented team. I played on teams that were closer together personally, teams that pulled together stronger, uh, and I played on two world champions, so it's hard for me to say I played on, uh, this is a better team than any team I've played on. I can't say that yet. For Oakland, Dave Stewart is the unflappable veteran. He said his elbow has finally healed. It's not causing him any pain. Now, Dave Stewart's trademark isn't any pitch he throws. It's that death stare to the plate. I'm really concentrating all my efforts into one area which that is between the catcher and me. And there is no hitter, there is no first baseman, there is no outfielder until the ball leaves the bat. Uh, most of the time I'm hoping that it doesn't, doesn't get to that point. He told me he doesn't use that look anywhere except on the mound. Back to you, Pat O'Brien. All right, Leslie Visser, thank you. Dick Kitty, we look forward to your call of the game tonight. Right now, though, let's flash back to relive what we think were the key plays that launched both these teams on their way towards this championship. It was July 29th. If you opened up the sports pages, you'd see that the reigning world champion Minnesota Twins led Oakland by a game as these two AL West powers were meeting at the Metrodome. In the top of the ninth, Eric Fox of the A's blasted this game-winning three-run homer. Oakland then went off to win 16 of their next 24. A lot of bashing around there, opening up an insurmountable seven-game league. Toronto's key plays were really off-season deals that brought veterans Jack Morris and Dave Winfield up north. On opening day, Jack Morris tossed a five-hitter against the Tigers. 20 more wins would follow for Morris. He is the first 20-game winner in Toronto's history. 
Then on May 7th, Dave Winfield came up with two out in the bottom of the ninth. The Blue Jays trailing 7-3. Mr. May unloaded a grand slam home run as the Jays went on to win 8-7. Winfield and Morris, they could be the difference that gives Canada its first World Series team. And wouldn't Winfield like to put a Mr. in front of October? We come back here, we'll have the key players. I'm Jack Morris taking a stroll, going over his game plan, no doubt. He went 21-6 and six for the Blue Jays, including half a dozen shutouts. He's got plenty of big game experience, folks. In, in fact, in baseball terms, this Morris is the equivalent of a certain cat by the same name. And here's a look now at some of his many good luck lives. Come on and be my little good luck child. Who could forget Don Baylor with three different World Series teams, Lonnie Smith with four, and now call him Jack Rabbitfoot Morris, the good luck charm who rode the Tigers to a title in 1984. Then last year, what a homecoming as he led his twins to dramatic victory, seven games and one inning. Of course, he was MVP. And now donning a Blue Jays cap, he's starting to realize he's not just a good luck charm, he's just plain good. I can remember the playoffs last year. We felt we could beat Jack. We felt we were going to get to him because we would, you know, always one or two hits away. But that's the way he leaves it. He always leaves one or two hits away from beating him, and he ends up with the victory. I felt more pressure in Detroit than I felt anywhere else. And, uh, I guess the fact that I was able to release all that and learn that, you know, your best effort is all you can do, whether you win or whether you lose. Uh, finally, it kind of a burden was lifted from my mind, and I just enjoy it now. Whatever happens, happens. He exudes a confidence in the locker room and on the field that it's almost like we're going to battle. I may get beat up a little bit, but one, one way or another, we're going to win. He exudes that, and uh, the team feels that way. Uh, I just went over to Detroit last couple games they were you know playing us here in the dome and I uh, went over to talk to some of my ex-teammates and they re reminded me what a lucky guy I am and I told them yeah that's because I got rid of you guys you know? <laughs> but uh, it was all in fun and uh, I realized that I am lucky game one of the American League Championship Series is coming up on CBS after a word from your local station as you see them introducing the stars under the stars and the lights at Sky Dome Friday send it up to our men atop Sky Dome. Dick Stockton will call the play-by-play. -play. Jim Cott will handle the color. That's C-O-L-O-U-R up there. Dick Stockton, have a great series, my friend. All right, Pat, thank you very much. And the question here is, is this the last hurrah for the Oakland A's? You're looking at the oldest team in the American League. And many of their big stars are in the home stretch of their careers. And tack on free agency, they could lose half the team by the time spring training rolls around next year. But the big story and the compelling story really is the quest of the Toronto Blue Jays. And you know, there is no black cloud hanging over the head of my partner, Jim Cott, but there may be a black cloud over the Toronto Blue Jays who have been frustrated so many times to try to get to the World Series, and they try to fix it up. Dave Winfield, Jack Morris, David Cohen, but there are no more excuses, and you said if they don't get to the series, the season's a failure. It's really not fair, is it? But life really isn't fair. Cito Gaston has won three division titles in four years, yet he's never been manager of the year. Anything short of the World Series here will not be satisfying. But good news for the Toronto Blue Jay fans, I think they have by far their strongest team and their best chance to get to the World Series. Why? They have great starting pitching and they have more balance in their lineup than they've ever had before. You know, Jim, I don't remember a league championship series which has depended on veterans on both clubs as much as we have here. Not many young players that are expected to be stars is the veterans are star quality to the series. You're going to see it tonight. We'll start with Jack Morris and Dave Stewart. You have Dave Winfield and Ricky Henderson, but I think the key players in this series could be those guys down in the bullpen. You won't see a lot of them. They'll be capped off by Tom Hankey for Toronto and Dennis Eckersley for Oakland. Being a former pitcher, I know you love this matchup between Jack Morris and Dave Stewart in game one. How do you see the opening game? Well, I think it's been quite some time when we've been able to see two pitchers who excel in game one of a postseason series in Morris and Stewart. They're so similar. Both throw the ball hard. They have good fork balls. And another similarity, they tend to struggle in the early innings. And that's why I see the key in tonight's game, very similar to what Tom Kelly, the American League manager, said in the All-Star game. Hey, boys, let's win this game in the first inning. That could happen tonight for Tony La Russa or Cito Gaston. And he sure did. Now, for more on it, let's go to the third member of our team, Leslie Visser. 
Thanks, Dick. As you and Jim mentioned, all eyes tonight will be on 41-year-old Dave Winfield. He's the oldest non-pitcher ever to play in the ALCS, and his last time in a postseason, he was quite disappointing. He was one for 22 back in 1981 in the World Series. When I asked him what would it mean to you, Dave, to finally win a title, he said he always thinks of Michael Jordan when he finally won the World Championship, cradling that trophy. It's an experience Dave Winfield would like to have. So we'll be right back with the starting lineups from Sky Dome and Game 1 of the ALCS in just a moment. CBS Sports coverage of Game 1 of the 1992 American League Championship Series is brought to you by your Toyota dealer who invites you to discover the all-new Corolla. Discover Corolla again. The Prudential and a changing world, one thing remains rock solid. The Prudential. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. There's a house. Back at the Sky Dome, getting ready for game one of the American League. And 50,000 plus, they drew over 4 million, the largest crowd in the history of the major leagues. And the starting lineups for the Oakland A's. Ricky Henderson in the lineup, leading off in left field. Carney Lansford will hit second. Ruben Sierra will bat third. Harold Baines, cleanup hitter, the DH. Mark McGuire will be at first base, batting fifth. Terry Steinbach behind the plate, batting in the sixth slot. Veteran Willie Wilson in center field, batting seventh. Mike Bordick, the shortstop, hitting eighth. And Lance Blankenship getting the nod over Walt Weiss. Bordick would have played second. Weiss shortstop, but it's Blankenship at second, batting ninth. And Jack Morris, has he ever been here before, Mr. Cotton? Last time we saw Jack Morris, I think he was uh, jumping around with his teammates. A 1-0, 10-inning winner in the World Series. Blue Jays looking for that performance tonight. Let's take a quick look. At the team in the field, behind Jack Morris, he'll have Candy Maldonado in left field, Devon White in center, and Joe Carter, an MVP candidate in right field. Around the infield, Kelly Gruber. Good job in the field this year at third. Manuel Lee, he could be a gold glove winner at shortstop. Roberto Alomar at second, and John Olerud much improved at first base. Pat Borders does the catch. So it'll be Jack Morris, who is seven and one postseason last year he beat these Blue Jays twice while pitching for the Twins and the Atlanta Braves in two games and Ricky Henderson will lead off for the Oakland A's and Dennis Eckersley when he heard that Henderson would be leading off he said that's got to be a big boost for us he missed 45 games this year because of various ailments but they need his speed and his offensive electricity so here he is facing Jack Morris and we're ready for the first pitch and it's ball one outside. Henderson stole 48 bases, good enough for sixth in the league. And Cito Gaston said, well, simply our job is to keep him off, keep him off the base pass. Now back to fastball, and the count is one and one. And keep him off the base pass because it is not just the stolen bases. It's the disruptive force that Ricky becomes. They pay so much attention to him. He's Carney Lansford in the two-hole. Get some better pitches to hit. Infielders are on the move. He disrupts the entire game when he gets on base. And he went around in Henderson, and the count is one ball and two strikes. One and two to Henderson, who steps out of the batter's box. He is, I'm sure, looking for a performance that would rival his showing against the Blue Jays three years ago when he hit 400 against Toronto. He takes low and the count is two and two. He had five runs batted in and was eight for eight in stolen bases. Now when he walked out at uh, the, on the field at Sky Dome yesterday it was like hey it's 1989. He began to chat with reporters like he hasn't done all year. And he's really pumped for this series like he hasn't been in a long time. Off the fist and a bounding ball behind second. Manny Lee makes the play and they've kept Henderson off the base at least in the first inning. Here are the umpires working this series starting with Don Denkinger. Larry Young will be at first base. Al Clark at second and Derwood Merrill at third. Joe Brinkman is down the left field line and Drew Coble down the right field line. The A's and the Blue Jays split their season series six and six, but keep in mind that Oakland won six of the last seven. Here's Carney Lansford. Throw 
can bat roller to shortstop. And Manny Lee again makes the play, and there are two down. No doubt about Jack Morris and the Blue Jays being ready to play from pitch one. That was the thing this team had the reputation, the Toronto Blue Jays, that sometime they cruised for about three or four innings and then tried to kick it into gear. Not going to get by with that in this series. Well, you mentioned they really uh, have the whammy because they have not gone as far as people have wanted to, yet they have been a dominant team. In fact, in the last 10 years, they have averaged 89 victories, so they have been there or close to there in the last decade. Two down, here is Ruben Sierra, who was acquired in a big trade with the Texas Rangers late in the year, a blockbuster that sent Jose Canseco to Texas. And Sierra, a switch hitter, has been more effective, though, as a right-handed batter. Two down, nobody on. And Morris is ahead of Sierra, two strikes. Ball pitcher and a power hitter, you get as far back as you can. And Morris will handle this on the big hop and a 1 2 3 inning in the top of the first inning. The A's don't score, and the Blue Jays coming up. Devon White leads off for the Blue Jays. He's a switch hitter, as is Robbie batting second. Joe Carter hitting third in right field. Dave Winfield, the DH. John Olerud at first base hitting fifth. Candy Maldonado, the veteran left fielder, hitting sixth. Kelly Gruber at third base, followed by Pat Borders behind the plate and Manny Lee at shortstop. And Dave Stewart, who won 12 and lost 10, making the start for the A's. Coming off his best start of the year, he said pain-free, very effective, his last start of the regular season. And that familiar stare down at the hitter. Let's take a quick look. <laughs> he is focused, and the first pitch to Devon White is a fastball outside, ball one. Talk about Jack Morris and his 7-1 and one record in postseason. Dave Stewart in the league championship series is perfect. He is 5-0. and oh. And that marks the most wins in league championship history. But he's behind Devon White 2-0. Lansford playing a couple of steps in at third, and White out in front of that fastball. Man, you've got, you have to go back in history quite some time to find two pitchers that can match up like Stewart and Morris, game one of an important series. Three balls and a strike to Devon White. Like Whitey Ford or Catfish Hunter, Bob Gibson. Stewart is pitching a first game of a postseason series for the seventh time in his career. Morris for the fifth. Ford led the parade, as he mentioned, with eight. But Devon White draws a walk to lead off the first inning for the Blue Jays. Take a look around the field at the Oakland A's behind Dave Stewart. Ricky Henderson in left, Willie Wilson in center, and Ruben Sierra in right around the infield. Lansford, Bordick, Blankenship, and McGuire. And Terry Steinbach does the catching. And here is Robbie Alomar, quiet superstar, quiet all-star, and a great situational player. Whatever you need, he'll give you. White. A threat to run on at first base. Although the Blue Jays have not run nearly as much this year as they did last season. They relied more on the long ball. But a good lead by White. And he draws a throw. Again, the importance of the first inning. And Cito Gaston has some options here. You mentioned they rely on the long ball. But Devon White can steal a base. Then you use Bobby Alomar to hit the ball to the right side and advance it. And that only brings up Carter and Winfield to follow. So you see where Toronto's big threats come. Fastball is fouled out of play. And the count is no balls and one strike to Alomar. 
early example of how managers control the running game. All the signs sent in by Tony La Russa to Terry Steinbach. One was for Dave Stewart to bluff to first base, and that one was the slide step to get the ball to Steinbach a little quicker. speed after that the rest of their order in the LCS hit only 196 they've got a lot better hitting down the lineup this year than they did a year ago and white bluffs but does not go and the pitch is taken low one ball and one strike they have Winfield this year and they have a much improved John Oleru and Candy Maldonado's had a nice year so a lot of a lot of balance in that lineup that they didn't have last year there's that menacing look by Dave Stewart. The count is one and one to Alomar. Carter is on deck. Bottom of the first inning, no score. And White again bluffs, doesn't go, and a ground ball could be two. Over to second baseman Blankenship, and they turn the double play. Bordick and Blankenship, and Tony La Russa very confident with that duo. At Second base position. Walt Weiss, who was their shortstop for so many years, and we'll see plenty of him in this series, I'm sure, but not in the lineup tonight. Again, first game, cautious start, no running early in the count. And as a result, the A's are able to turn a double play with a tough hitter like Alomar and Devon White with good speed. There is Walt Weiss, who will get his chance probably tomorrow night in game two. He has been plagued by injuries in recent years, and that brings up Joe Carter, who's Driven in 100 runs in six of the last seven years. Two down, nobody on base. Takes a breaking ball for a strike, and does he ever appreciate Dave Winfield's presence behind him in the lineup this season? Said he's never had a hitter like Winfield behind him, realizing how many more fastballs and strikes he gets to hit. Pitchers don't want to face Winfield with Carter on base. Can't say I blame him. And he gets jammed and a looping pop fly in the center field, and that's going to drop in front of Willie Wilson. The big turn by Carter, he'll go back to first base. Wilson was playing very deep in center field, and Joe Carter has the first hit of the ball game. Outfielders will generally tell you that the most difficult ball to judge is when a power hitter like Carter takes a full swing and then gets hit in on the hands, because as an outfielder, see, you think that ball's coming rather deep. And Willie Wilson took just a split second to come in on the ball and as a result of that he had to play it on a hop. Wilson of course getting the play in center field Dave Henderson just couldn't come around and he is not on the active roster for this LCS. So here's Dave Winfield dangerous hitter and spiritual leader of the Blue Jays this year two down and part of the runner at first base. strikes to big Dave Winfield the Blue Jays had a big problem with their designated hitter slot last year in fact in the LCS they had only one run batted in and two for 18 they sure solved that problem with the signing of Winfield no problem this year he had a little problem with the Oakland pitching staff during the season as you can see by that 147 average one and oh the count and a high fly ball hit to left field Ricky Henderson calls for it retire the side the Blue Jays lead one and after one inning here in Toronto in game one no score throughout the series we're going to hear from the Rocket Roger Clemens on, on how he feels the Blue Jay pitchers should uh, pitch against Oakland and vice versa here's Harold Baines the designated hitter who had an off year leading off the second inning and takes low ball one. Baines' batting average was 40 points lower this season, but they need his left-handed bat against all the righties that the Blue Jays will present. And hope he can respond. He's ahead of the count, 2-0. Oh. Great plate coverage from that position in the box. Most of the time when hitters stand away from the plate, they do it because they want to get the ball away from them. And you see Baines back and away, strides in and can handle the ball away. He can drive it to left field. 
pitch, and that one will drop in front of Devon White for a base hit. So the A's have their first hit of the ball game. Well, speaking about Roger Clemens, how would he would pitch to batters? How about Mark McGuire? Here's the rocket. Mark McGuire, he's a great breaking ball hitter. Looks for a first pitch breaking ball. If he gets it, he can hit the ball a long way, especially if you hang it. Uh, the way to get him out might be to throw him a good, hard, tight slider away or stair step him with the fastballs. Just keep taking him a little bit further up and up in the strike zone. Stair step him with the fastball. That means maybe belt high, letter high, chin high. I still think he's a pretty good first ball fastball hitter also, but when you got stuff like the rocket, you can do about anything you want to get these so. hitters. <laughs> Easy for you to say, Roger. <laughs> McGuire got the fastball, but it was up high, ball one. 42 home runs, second to Juan Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers, who won the home run derby on the last day of the regular season. And a high fly ball hit deep to left center field, looking up, and this one is out over here. And that had to go about 420. Mark McGuire with a home run with Baines aboard and the A's have taken a two to nothing lead over Morris and the Jays here in the second. And this throng has been silenced and they were pretty loud when this game began. Fourth career postseason home run for Mark McGuire. I don't know if Jack Morris heard Roger Clemens scouting report. But Mark McGuire has devastated pitchers all year. That was up in the strike zone. It looked like either a hanging fork ball or a hanging breaking ball. And as most power hitters will do, you don't slip many of those past them. So it's the Oakland A's who draw first blood in this series. And Terry Steinbach, the A's catcher, takes a fastball for a strike. McGuire has nine hits in his career against Jack Morris and four of them have been for home runs fouled off by Steinbach and the count is no balls and two strikes and what that can translate into is Mark McGuire despite the fact Jack Morris is a great pitcher you feel so comfortable against a pitcher like that that you've had success against and this Mark McGuire is a more comfortable hitter this year anyway with the help of Doug Rader their hitting coach and there's another drive hit deep to left and this two may get out of here and Steinbach has hit a home run. Terry Steinbach who's had great success against Jack Morris has hit a home run to make it three to nothing back to back homers here in the second inning for Oakland. And the long ball which is expected to come from Toronto bats has stunned this crowd Jim. One of the more valuable players on this team. There was some question the last couple of weeks of the season about Steinbach's health, lower abdominal pull. No problem there. Again, a hanging breaking ball inside half of the plate. Jack Moore, you see the <laughs> smile on his face. When this inning's over, he'll go into the bench and he'll tell his teammates, hey, I want to find out how good you guys are. I spotted him three runs. Let's see if you can come back with something. That's the kind of camaraderie he's had with the Blue Jay team. Willie Wilson swings and misses a fork ball strike one so Steinbach and of all of the ailments affecting the Oakland A's his was the most serious you lose Steinbach as you mentioned to that stomach muscle problem and the A's would have been in deep trouble one of the better catchers at shutting down the running game as well as a good hitter. and a line drive foul down the left field line off the bat of Wilson and the count no balls and two strikes in fact, with a home run by McGuire, we know the kind of year he's had and Ricky Henderson's reputation. But when you talk to players and managers around the American League, they'll usually say Carney Lansford and Terry Steinbach are the two players on Oakland's team that, that they worry about beating them a ball game. And Willie Wilson strikes out 14 years with the Kansas City Royals and played a lot more than he expected with Dave Henderson's injury. Strikes out for the first out here in the second. See the determination on Jack Morris's face as he comes in with that four seam fastball knowing that three is all right when you have a good hitting team you may get four but give up one more run to this team do will lose very often. Well here's the man that Tony La Russa would pinpoint on his MVP this year Mike Bordick. He led the A's in hitting with a 300 average and for a while led the American League before he tailed off a bit but he's a solid hard nosed infielder. Hit Toronto pitching very well indeed. Takes a strike and it's one and one. What 
But Mike Bordick got advice from Doug Raiders. Raiders said, how did you hit in the minor leagues? How were you the most comfortable? And Bordick said, from this open stance. He said, well, go back to it. Must have worked. He was a 229 lifetime hitter yeah. before this season. Well, it, as they do with a lot of young players, it's unorthodox, and they tinkered with him a little bit, tried to get him to try different things. It, it didn't work. So Raider just said, go back to your most comfortable position, 300 hitter. Swings and misses on the fork ball. So two straight strikeouts after the A's had blasted Morris for three runs here in the second inning. Little better break to these fork balls than the one that McGuire or Steinbach got. And Morris again realizing that that's about the limit in numbers of runs you can give up and still hope to win a ball game. He's had a little better luck during the season doing that. Chances are he won't against the Oakland pitching staff. As you mentioned, he normally has had one rough inning. Normally it's the first. And he's hoping it is just the second tonight. Lance Blankenship, the number nine hitter for the A's, playing second base this evening, takes ball one. By the way, the back-to-back -back home runs by McGuire and Steinbach are the first in the American League Championship Series in 12 years. Rick Cerrone and Lou Pinella, who just resigned as manager of the Reds yesterday, those two with the Yankees were the last to do it. There's a strike, one and one to Blankenship. One of the most beautiful arenas in all of sport would be Sky Dome here in Toronto. They've got everything here, a restaurant, a hotel. You can go on a vacation for two weeks in this place. Swing and a miss on a fastball, one and two. And they were rocking during the pregame introductions like I've never heard a Toronto crowd. Yeah, Dave Winfield has, has tried to motivate them this year to make some more noise. They, they support fans, 50,000 a game. They generally do not make a lot of noise. They did tonight before the game. Those two home runs quieted them down a little bit. You know, right now, they're still louder than I remember them during the regular season. Here's the one-two pitch for two now. And it's up high, two and two. There's so much anticipation and also a little apprehension from the fans here. I mean, they, they know they have a good team. This could be the year they go to the World Series, and yet they still carry around that baggage of those past division wins never having got them. That's that black cloud I was talking about. <laughs> Check swing, and they appeal to the first base umpire, Larry Young. He said Blankenship went around. So Jack Morris, after giving up back-to-back -back home runs, strike out the side. And in the middle of the second inning, it's the A's three, and the Blue Jays nothing. Rolades is proud to announce the 1992 American League Rolades Relief Man of the Year, Dennis Eckersley of the Oakland A's. Dennis Eckersley racked up 159 points with a record of 7 and 1 and 51 saves. And the Oakland A's, they have a saying, why do we come to the ballpark and to a man, they all say, to get Eck a save. That means everybody wins. Sure, they want to see him pitch the ninth. Cito Gaston says, I, I hope we don't see him the entire series. <laughs> John Olrood leading off against Dave Stewart, who's working with a three-run lead here in the bottom of the second inning. And the first pitch is a strike to Olrood. I got to think that in a pressure classic matchup that we have between Morris and Stewart, if you're staked to a pretty good lead three runs early, that's got to take a lot of burden off of your shoulders. Especially for the Oakland starting rotation this year. You know, they are not the dominant starting staff in the days of a few years ago with, with Stewart and Welch, Bob Welch, with a lot of injuries this year, and they only have eight complete games all year. But Dave Stewart knows if I hold this lead through the sixth, They've got a terrific bullpen to set up Dennis Eckersley also. Two on pitch is fouled away, and the count is two and two. Olerud had a slow start this year and came very close to hitting 300 in August, but fell back. He's been a line drive hitter to all fields, but they've been working with him to pull the ball more. Larry Heisel, the batting instructor, and he's responded with home runs to right and right center field. Two-two pitch. Stays alive and fouls it away. Although looking at the outfield, they do play him as a spray hitter. The outfield around to the left. When you see a young hitter come up to the big leagues, the first thing that impresses you is when you see quiet hands and a quiet body in the batter's box. That means you have a better chance of keeping your eye on the ball, making contact. The 
He went the opposite way on that pitch. And it remains two and two. And These are the quiet hands. That's the kind of action John Olerud has. Now, you, you watch Carney Lansford, a, a veteran, gets it done a different way with a lot of fidgeting around in the batter's box. But Olerud, very, very quiet. Borderline pitch misses outside, and the count is full. Olerud will be followed by Candy Maldonado and Kelly Gruber here in the second inning. The A's exploded for three runs. Thanks to back-to-back -back homers in the top of this inning. And the 3-2 pitch. Fouled out of play. Olerud has had good success against Dave Stewart. He is hitting 308 lifetime against Stu, including a home run. And we're in a bat like this from John Olerud. And we've talked about the balance in the Toronto lineup where it can tell is you're making Dave Stewart work harder against this lineup than you had to work against the Blue Jays in the past when you got past Alomar White and Carter. He got a fastball out over the plate and a line drive into the left field corner. And it is foul. This is game one, of course, of the League Championship Series. Tomorrow night, it'll be Mike Moore and David Cohn in game two, 8.30 Eastern time. And then... After a day of travel, the series shifts to Oakland and three afternoon games, if necessary, on Monday, but Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Three balls and two strikes. Olerud making Stewart work. This is the tenth pitch coming up, and he lost him ball four. That's the second walk given up by Dave Stewart, and for the second time in the game, the Blue Jays have the leadoff man aboard. in a postseason play in both the National and American Leagues, Candy Maldonado. Maldonado has struggled against Stewart. Hitting 118. Infield plays him to pull and the outfield the same way. Left fielder Henderson is deep. Strike one to him. What Cito Gaston and that Blue Jay bench have going for him this year in a game like this, down 3 nothing, is you look at the home run totals of a Candy Maldonado. They can get back in the game with a long ball, unlike last year's team. Fouls it away. Last year, if they didn't get those first three batters on base and they didn't run, they were really out of it. And then Joe Carter, you remember in game three, got injured. Chasing a ball in right field, and that really took the Blue Jays out of the series as they lost all three games to the Minnesota Twins at home. Joe Carter is a lot healthier, with maybe one glitch that we'll tell you about. 0-2 to Maldonado with Olerud the runner on. He's not a threat to run. And Maldonado swings and misses for the strikeout, and that is the first of the game for Dave Stewart. See a veteran hitter like Candy Maldonado shake his head. How did I miss that pitch? Well, when, when Stuart and Morris lock up in game one, that extra adrenaline, I don't know what it's worth on the radar gun, but you know there's a little more juice on that fastball than maybe there would be in July or August. You do get juiced up at this time of year. You better. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Gruber with one out and one on takes up high ball one. It's been a rough year for Kelly Gruber. He had a knee injury, and he was out 50 games this year. But more than that, he had to assume the wrath of the fans. He was the object of their disappointment if one of the Blue Jays came up empty at the plate this year. He heard the boos. Breaking ball is in for a strike, one and one. Well, it's been puzzling to watch Kelly Gruber the last few years because when I first saw him on the big league scene, he struck me as the kind of guy with the mentality of a middle linebacker. You know, play hard, play all the time, and now... He's getting criticized for missing games with these little minor injuries. Nobody can figure out why. Doesn't seem like the same guy. Good fastball on the inside corner that was running in on the hitter's hands. And Stewart's ahead of him, one and two. And to his credit, as you see Stewart's pitch, Steinbach sitting outside. You don't always throw them all exactly where you want to. Got that one on the inside corner. To Gruber's credit, he's still playing very well in the field, despite not having a good year at the bat. Two 
pitch and it's fouled out of play. Olerud is the base runner. He walked here in the second inning. Maldonado struck out. Blue Jays are trailing the A's three to nothing. The on deck hitter is catcher Pat Borders. Bordick over to second for one and they turn the double play despite the slide by Gruber. So that's the second double play turned by the A's. And after two innings it's three to nothing in favor of Oakland. CBS Sports coverage of game one of the 1992 American League Championship Series is brought to you by Dr. Pepper's what the doctor ordered. Scope, the best thing, first thing in the morning. And by Lexus, luxury automobiles, including the redesigned 1993 LS400. The Blue Jays have been in first place since June the 20th. Never more than a half a game behind, but even more amazing, considering their consistency, they were not swept in any series in a season. Tough to broom teams out when you throw pitchers like Morris, Guzman, Cone late in the year, Jimmy Key, Todd Stoudemire early on. They've had a, a pretty deep rotation, and those are the teams that are tough to sweep in a series. It's the first time that's happened in 49 years. Here's Ricky Henderson, who bounced to short his first time up. Change up goes all the way to the backstop, and the count is 2-0. That pitch is, a, is an example of why Morris has some problems early on and sometimes Dave Stewart when you throw the fork ball it's difficult to find the release point where you find that point that it comes out of your hands and gets into the strike zone. This is low and three and oh so Morris is in danger of walking Ricky Henderson and with a three run lead you know that the Oakland A's could play hit and run or, or any of the running game strategy that Tony La Russa has in mind. And he loses him, and Henderson draws a walk. That's the first given up by Jack Morris. Yeah, we will see a little what managers call tack on baseball right now. You may see a fun, a steal. Carney Lansford could take the ball to the right side. Anyway, as in Tony LaRusso's words, to make another mark. Keep making a mark on that scoreboard and increase the lead from three on up. And when you make a mark in three innings, usually that results yep. in a victory. That's the way Tony figures it. So here is Lansford who also bounced to shortstop his first time up and keep in mind that Ricky Henderson has stolen on artificial turf only one time this year because they don't have many parks like that in the American League and ball one to Lansford and Jack Morris every year in the big leagues has been one of the easiest pitchers to steal on why because power pitchers and pitchers that throw that fork ball a little higher leg kick ball takes longer to get the home plate and the catcher gets the blame. There you see Henderson and where he is postseason wise in the stolen base department. So an opportunity for the A's to add to their lead. Been a strange year for the Oakland A's. They never used their outfield, their starting outfield this year of Ricky Henderson, Dave Henderson, and Jose Canseco at all. And Ricky had his share of injuries. He does not go and the pitch is up and in. 2-0 to Lansford. So Morris is struggling here in the third inning as well. On deck is Ruben Sierra. And there goes Henderson and the hit and run was in order and the pitch is fouled away. Ricky got a good jump. Count is two balls in one strike as he returns to first. Ideal man to have in that number two hole for Tony La Russa, Carney Lansford, because of that ability to, to make contact with the pitch and take it through that hole between first and second. Renee Latchman, the third base coach, flashing the signs. Another good number two hitter is Jerry Brown, who has been slightly injured as of late, who we'll see plenty of in this series back and just getting back is Henderson a moody 
great player to say the least. Maybe a little bit with Jack a lot with Ricky Henderson and he was in fine fettle yesterday in practice. He's gearing up for the postseason. Does not go in the 2 1 pitch one hopper and it should be two covering it second is Lee the throw to first and they just get him and a double play. Morris had to pause a moment to, so that Lee could get over to second base. Well, we may be seeing the start of what Joe Carter referred to with Jack Morris. You can knock him around a little bit just about the time you think you'll beat him. He'll keep getting that big out and keep your team in the game and you come back and win. And that was a big one right there. You're always one or two pitches away, but mm. you never get to him. So there are two down. That's the third double play in the ball game. And here is Ruben Sierra. Who bounced back to Morris his first time up. Sierra a switch hitter and Tony La Russa said I think we've got more ways to win with Ruben than we did with Jose Canseco. He makes contact runs the bases and he said more than anything else plays every day. Strong arm. There's a change up. And the count is 2 and 0 oh, and there you see the laundry list of free agents that the A's have. Ruben Sierra being one of them even Jack Morris said no disrespect for Canseco but he said Jose wanted to take that big swing and embarrass you and take it in the upper deck. Sierra could do more things with the ball. On the corner for a strike, two and one. When Sierra was acquired by the A's, he had the chicken pox, didn't play for a while. Oakland lost their first five games, and people were really down on the deal. And before you know it, Sierra came back, and the A's won ten straight games, and no one has questioned it lately. Pretty good player to lease for 30 days and get you into postseason play. We saw that long list of free agents there, and I doubt that many of them will be back. Carney, or rather Terry Steinbach, would be one of them. That a key one is Mark McGuire. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Half swing, foul back. And that's why there is some sense of urgency for the A's, uh, if they're going to do it, to do it now. You mentioned in the open this could be the last shot for many of these players. And Oakland management has talked about that over the years. You, you build up your payroll, you have a successful team, and you can only go so far with that payroll before you have to restructure it. 2-2 pitch and a roller to second base. Alomar will handle it, and that'll retire the side. It is still 3-0 in favor of Oakland, and we'll return to Sky Dome after this word from your local station. You have a guy like Jack Morris who the Blue Jays depend on really as he's done for so many other clubs they're trailing. What's the mindset of the dugout right now? With anybody else it might be a little tense but with Jack as I mentioned a while ago he might say hey, I want to see how good you guys are. Can you get more than three or he'll walk up and down and say I've never lost a game when you scored ten runs for me. Let's get going. So he keeps it rather loose down there. At borders the Blue Jays catcher takes ball one from Dave Stewart here in the third inning. You talk about the leaders, the veteran leaders, Morris and Dave Winfield, I guess. And he's won plenty of games this year where he's given up four or five runs and the Blue Jays have come back. Two balls and no strikes to Waters. Keep in mind, the Blue Jays have had terrific success in supporting him. Morris has had the benefit of over five runs a game when he has started this year. So he may be looking for some of those paybacks. Borders pops it up to the left side of the infield. Lansford gives way to Mike Bordick. And one down in the Blue Jays third. That 20 win season can be a little deceptive. You mentioned the run support and the ERA over four. But Cito Gaston will point out quickly without Jack Morris in August in some of those games that he won in tight games that he won. Toronto would not be in the LCS. It's a whole season. And that includes April for those people that thought that the Brewers spurred at the end was the most significant thing. Here is Manny Lee. He takes ball one outside. Biggest surprise on the Blue Jays this year, according to general manager Pat Gillick. He has raised his average considerably. Third baseman Lansford playing a few steps in and a swing on the fastball and it's one and one yeah, and the gold glove award is usually given to a player that has decent stats at the plate Manny Lee 
not in that category, but I don't know that there's a shortstop in the American League that has played better in the field than Manny Lee this year. And Mark McGuire dives to his right, feeds Stewart, and they get him. Fine play by McGuire who has always had a reputation of being an agile first baseman for his side. He must be watching his brother play. I mean, this is a little bit of a quarterback shuffle. Talk. Watch what he does right here. He doesn't even see Stewart, and he pitches out to him. And Stewart, as all the pitchers practice in spring training, a quick break off the mound, and he's there to take the throw. A little blindside pitch out. Worked. Two down in the third inning. Three to nothing in favor of Oakland, and here is Devon White, who drew a walk and was erased on a double play in the first inning. Stewart's first pitch took something off it on the corner for a strike. Dave Stewart, the winningest pitcher in the major leagues the last five years, but has never won a Cy Young award. It's been close on occasion, but no cigar. Missing away, and it's one and one. And when you see that look in his eyes right now, he has one thing in mind. I have a three-run lead, and I am not going to give it up without a fight. That's always been his characteristic. You can touch him up for a couple of runs, but he's a great deal like Morris. He does not give up many leads. I think the word competitor must fit in somewhere here. Both of these guys. Two balls in his strike. Won 20 games for four straight years. Never hurt, but the last two years he's been on the disabled list. He's 35 years old. Age may be beginning to show, but he didn't show it there with the fastball. And the count is two and two to Devon White. swing and a full count now to the Blue Jays center fielder. Four of Devon White's 12 hits in his career off of Dave Stewart have been of the extra base variety. A lot of that due to his outstanding speed. With two down, here's the 3-2 pitch to White. And he walks it. So a two-out base runner as White walks for the second time in the game. Third walk issued by Dave Stewart. Now we'll see Cito Gaston with his home run hitters in that lineup down three runs. Will he take a cautious approach? You know, you have speed like White and Alomar, but oftentimes you can use it in situations like this to get back in a game, pick up a run at a time. But the, the Blue Jays do not often run in these situations when they're down a few runs, unlike Milwaukee. They run all the time. Well, it wouldn't be a bad idea, Jim, to get something going here so that you don't get into a mesmerized situation with Stewart knocking you down with zeros. And White has been successful on 37 of 41 attempts. And with Carter on deck, Alomar will try to keep it alive for Joe and the big power hitters. But this is, is a good situation to run to get that first run into scoring position. Foul back. And for more reasons than that, the Blue Jays have to overcome the reputation they've had the past few years of waiting to get beat. And when you when you sit in the dugout and you're down three and you don't create any action, you, you give that appearance. And that's the reputation the Blue Jays have. If you steal a few bases and try to get back in it, you eliminate that. And you give yourself a team, uh, your team a chance to win at the same time. Pitch is taken low one and one. And of course, that sometime is the criticism against Cito Gaston, who has the reputation of being a passive manager. That's the best way to put it, I think. He sits back and plays station to station baseball. But sometime you got to shake things up. Yeah, they have not run as much this year as in past years. And there goes White. And the 1 1 pitch is lined to right field. It's a base hit. Fielded by Sierra. Going to third base is Devon White. Well, lo and behold, the Blue Jays were playing hit and run, and they have runners at first and third and two outs. White on the run, takes a quick peek in. Alomar gets a pitch up in the strike zone. 
the Blue Jays have the right man at home plate in Joe Carter. Second base hit of the ball game for Toronto. A little anxious is the A's manager, La Russa, and here is Joe Carter. Carter single to center field and was not hit sharply his first time up. would love to get it going against the A's after struggling hitting only 128 against Oakland pitching this season. Three to nothing Oakland and there goes Alomar the pitch is swung on a miss the throw to second and Alomar has a stolen base. I mean, that's unlike Toronto, and is that an aggressive play? Sure, Roberto Alomar can steal a base, but Steinbach is one of the better catchers at throwing runners out. What if this inning would have ended with Joe Carter standing at the plate and a chance to tie the game? Rosito well, Gaston not taking the defensive approach, and he now he has two runners in scoring position. And the count, strike one to Carter. You know, this game has taken an ironic turn. Toronto was supposed to play long ball and sit around and not run. We have seen the home runs off of the Oakland bats, and we have seen the Blue Jays taking chances on the base pad so far. That's why it's fun to predict how these games are going to come out, right? Because you always know. I mean, this tonight's game and what you mentioned is a perfect example. Teams doing things a little differently than they did during the season. Carter White with the lead at third Alomar at second and a pop fly toward the dugout and out of play you could see Carter reach for that pitch you know when I was a kid the Army football team had you remember Doc Blanchard and Glenn Davis Mr. Mr. Inside Mr. Outside Carter likes the ball inside you see him reach for that pitch he's very quick on the pitch inside unlike Winfield who pitchers will try to get in on he likes it out away from him and you can see Stewart there trying to make Joe Carter reach don't want to make a mistake here Steinbach going to the mound to talk to Stewart with the count one ball and two strikes and on deck would be Winfield ahead if Carter keeps it alive said there was one glitch concerning Carter he went to the hockey game last night the Maple Leafs opened their season against the Washington Capitals there was a fireworks display and Alomar and Carter went to the game as spectators and a cinder got into Carter's eye and he had to have it taken out gone to the hospital after the second period he says he's all right here's the 2-2 pitch to him and a high fly ball center field and Willie Wilson has plenty of room and that will end the Toronto threat. They leave runners in scoring position. And we've completed three innings. Stu and the A's lead it three to nothing. This game summary is sponsored by AT&T. First back-to-back -back home runs in the American League Championship Series. A couple of double plays turned over by the A's. And the Jays left runners in scoring position as we move to the top of the fourth inning. Harold Baines facing Jack Morris for the second time. He singled his first time up and fouls it off. The count is one and one. Along with Jim Cott, this is Dick Stockton here at Sky Dome in Toronto. Game one of the league championship series. the middle so Harold Baines is aboard with a leadoff hit takes a big turn and goes back to first base he's been a quiet bat most of this year but he may be coming alive and this was the big two run homer by Mark McGuire in the second and a, how long was that that had to be way over 400 feet as a pitcher once you hear the sound you don't even care because you can recognize especially with the McGuire when that ball hits the sweet spot you saw again from that shot where that breaking pitch hung up about belt to letter high borders wanted it down and away 
But we had a guy with a tape measure who has just come back to tell us that it went 417 feet. Smash into the stands foul. Jack Morris has not been sharp, Jim, since the first inning of this game. A typical Jack Morris outing during the season in that he struggles early, but you come to expect so much of him in postseason play because of his past record. So to give up three runs here in the early going uh, is surprising in postseason play. Weak swing, foul tipped it into the glove of Pat Borders, and the count is 0-2. Nonetheless, it might have been worse. He struck out the side after those back-to-back -back home runs and was helped out by a double play after the leadoff man got aboard in the third inning. What he'll try to do in the early part of a game is find out which of his pitches is his best. Is it fastball or forkball? And he'll try to go with that pitch that's working well for him. One and two. And right now, maybe going through a period of time where a lot of pitchers do, that he, he can't get himself organized. The fork ball isn't real sharp. The fastball, he doesn't have good control of it. And that's why the, the woes in the early innings for a guy like Jack Morris. Fouled out of play, still one and two to McGuire, according to Cito Gaston's pitching plans. Unlike Tony LaRusso, who will go with four starters, Cito will go with three starters. So he's going to pitch David Cohn in game number two. And Juan Guzman will pitch the first game in Oakland, and he expects to come back with Jack Morris on three days rest on Sunday. One ball, two strikes to count to McGuire with a runner at first base. And McGuire strikes out. That is the fourth strikeout of the ball game for Jack Morris. And let's see Terry Steinbach's home run again in the second inning. Another hanger, but Morris made the adjustment this at bat to McGuire. That last one was had a good sharp breakdown in the zone. And try to do the same thing to Steinbach. He mentioned the pitching rotation. I don't know of a championship series where you list those pitchers and each guy has better stuff than the one before. <laughs> well, as far as the Blue Jays are concerned, you're looking at three number one pitchers when you list Morris, Cohn, and Guzman. And it wasn't that long ago that Jimmy Key was their number one guy, and he's not going to get a chance to pitch except out of the bullpen. He only won five games in September for all his work, and well, may have to sit this one out. On the inside corner. We told you about Cerrone and Penella, but the McGuire Steinbach back-to-back -back home run effort back in the second inning, fifth in league championship history in this American League. One ball and one strike to Steinbach with one out. Harold Baines on it first with a leadoff single. One ball and two strikes. McGuire. Borders on the outside part of the plate. And that's where Morris puts it this time. two and two. Well, if he gets that kind of velocity on his fastball, he may be relying more on that than the forkball. The word on Jack Morris is usually if he if he has that good fastball, he'll maneuver that around and use it to give out of some big innings. If he has both of them working, that's when you see performances like you saw last year in Game 7 of the World Series. Two and two to Steinbach, who has hit Morris well over the years. The count holds it, two balls and two strikes. Steinbach has emerged, perhaps, as the best all-round catcher in the league. And right after that foul ball, Rene Latchman, third base coach, walked toward Harold Baines as if to say, hey, we want to start the runner here. We want to create a little action. And you're right, Steinbach, the best all-around catcher, not just a power hitter. He hit it to right field. In the dirt, Border lo Borders loses it, and Baines will move into second base. So the A's have a runner in scoring position here in the fourth inning. Very improved at blocking balls like this is Pat Borders, but about the only thing you can do as a catcher on a fork ball or a slider like that is try to keep it in front of you. That one hopped away just far enough for Baines to advance. Wild pitch charge to Morris to allow Harold Baines to move to second base. 
Three balls and two strikes to Steinbach. Infield playing back and straight away. And the same for the outfield. He'll try to hit the ball. Make contact. Ground ball to Gruber at third. He makes the out. Baines had a hold at second base, and there are two down. million and 28,000 the all-time major league record last year the Blue Jays also drew over four million the first time that had ever been accomplished and as Cito Gaston mentioned the fans here may be quiet but they come out in record numbers and that's why Toronto can afford to put the kind of team on the field they put out there here's Willie Wilson a strikeout victim his first time up takes ball one inside As you talked about the budget problems that some clubs could be facing, the A's, for one, with all those free agents, the Blue Jays don't have that problem. A lot of talent, a lot of cash. Time is called, and Willie Wilson steps out. Wilson is 37 years old. Played a lot more than even he anticipated. The most games in the last four years due to the problems with Dave Henderson. It's a ground ball right at Roberto Alomar. So the leadoff single is wasted. The A's leave one in the middle of the fourth inning. It is still Oakland three, Toronto nothing. Three nothing Oakland. Dave Winfield coming up. 20-year man. What does he credit his long career to? just like bodybuilders or anything else but knowing how to take care of yourself I look at the way some of these guys eat that the young guys they won't play this long or the things that they do after games they won't play this long they probably won't want to or need to or anything but uh, you just learn to take care of yourself and you learn the nuances and the fundamentals of the game and uh, execute them daily then you gotta like what you do I like what I do I really wouldn't want to be doing anything else right now no one has ever done at his age and accomplished what Dave Winfield has after sitting out an entire year when he was in his late 30s. That's incredible. He missed all of uh, the 1989 season when he was age 38 with back surgery. Comeback player of the year. I mean, try to do that when you're 25. Coming back from back surgery would be tough enough to do it at 38. Unbelievable. And the oldest player in history to drive in 100 runs in a season. No balls and two strikes. Stewart is ahead of Winfield. And a drive hit deep to right field. Ruben Sierra back and makes the catch. But that was well hit by Dave Winfield and the hardest hit ball by the Blue Jays so far. Got those arms extended. Boy, when he can get that ball middle of the plate out where he can extend those arms. He hits some two iron like shots and Ruben Sierra you see the quick glance at the warning track just so he knows exactly where he is and he has enough room he could catch it and then brace himself all outfielders will do that take that quick peek to find out how close to the wall they are brings up John Olerud who walked to lead off the second inning and was out on a double play takes a fastball up high one and oh. Three to nothing in favor of Oakland here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Gets a good fastball to hit and fouls it out of play. And we talk about how important Baines and Sierra are to the A's. Left-handed batters against all of the righties they'll see. Same for Olerud right in the middle of that lineup against the Oakland right-handers. Yeah, because against right-hand relievers late in the game, if they have a, a parking place for Winfield, here's the guy that's going to be called down to knock in the runs. And a... Ball hit off the glove of Blankenship at second. He recovers and in time. Hard hit, but Blankenship here on the artificial turf was playing almost a shallow right field to handle that one and made the play and Olerud retired. Positioning in the field enabled Lance Blankenship to make this play. You mentioned short right field. It's hit well. He knows he has time. It gets there quickly off the turf. Still time to recover and make the throw. Full 
year with the Oakland A's, Lance Blankenship. He's had LCS experience in the past, but only as a pinch runner. And now he's thrown right into the cauldron. Two down, and Candy Maldonado, the batter. 1-0 the count to Candy. He struck out his first time up. He was picked up during last season from the Milwaukee Brewers. Fastball, one and one. You know, you hear coaches say, lost my concentration. My player came in and said, I lost my concentration. When you look at Dave Stewart, you understand what concentration is. And that's a picture of it right there. It's like he's looking down the tunnel right into the catcher's glove. And that's what he's looking down. And a drive hit to center field coming on in is Willie Wilson, and he makes the running catch. So the 37-year-old can still run on artificial turf for one, two, three inning. And we've completed four innings here in Toronto. The A's are in front three to nothing. Game two of our series tomorrow night at 8.30 here at Sky Dome. A couple of right-handers will be working. David, Mike. Former men. Mentioned David Cohn having better stuff probably than Jack Morris, and the same can be said about Mike Moore. Mike Bordick, the batter, takes a fastball for a strike. Moore was the biggest winner on the A's staff this year with 17 wins. And if you judge pure stuff, Mike Moore, the fastball, forkball, and a slider. A lot of pitchers wish they had one pitch they could strike a hitter out with. Fastball, and that's hit out to right field, coming on in and making the diving catch is Joe Carter. But credit Carter for playing shallow in right field. Otherwise, he would have had no chance to make that play. Boy, you got that right. And there ought to be a ton of big league pitchers standing up applauding Joe Carter right now. Because one of the biggest mistakes of the fielders playing too deep in the opposite field. Carter cheats in a couple steps. And instead of a leadoff single, that's an out. To get a little pat on the back from Jack Morris after this inning. Go along with that abrasion on his elbow. One out to Lance Blankenship, who struck out in the second inning. Jack Morris, after giving up the back-to-back -back home runs to Mark McGuire, a two-run blow, and Terry Steinbach then struck out the side to end that second frame. One out. The A's are batting in the top of the fifth inning and leading three to nothing thanks to those three runs in the second. Took a pitch for a strike. See Joe Carter in the same position here. Devon White in center, Candy Maldonado in left at normal depth, but Carter cheating in a couple of steps. Just to try to take away that little bloop single. Fastball fouled off, and it's 0-2. Interesting on the pitching matchups, Moore going tomorrow Tony La Russa feels that Moore has had success pitching here and going with Ron Darling in game three in Oakland and the day night factor comes into play there also you wouldn't think managers would look that deeply into it but he said Mike Moore has success at night Ron Darling pitches well in the day game that's low one and two of course when we go out to the West Coast those games will be about noontime out there in Oakland there's Ron Darling. And of course, those people that were looking for the romantic matchup of Cone and Darling, the two former Met right handers, won't get their wish in this series. It doesn't appear. Two balls and two strikes. The count to Blankenship, the number nine hitter for the A's tonight. One out, nobody on. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Oakland's long ball has paid off, and Dave Stewart has kept the Blue Jays at bay. Three to nothing, the score in game one. swing and the count is full well you see that great discipline along with Ricky Henderson and Mark McGuire Lance Blankenship draws a lot of walks In fact, this Oakland team drawn more walks than anybody in 20 years and in a series like this with good starting pitching can be a factor three balls and two strikes
pitch is low ball four. Well, let's hear what Roger Clemens has to say on his own personal scouting report on how to pitch to Ricky Henderson. With Ricky Henderson, I think the first thing you notice about him is his stance. He has a very small crouch stance. It's hard to throw strikes to him. Early in the game, you'll notice that he's a better fastball hitter. Uh, late in the game, he'll be a little more patient and look for a walk to get on base to try and hurt you. And hurt you, he can. Well, see, this is the middle of the game. I wonder what he's going to do right here, but with Lance Blankenship at first, Tony LaRussa has a number of options because Blankenship has great speed. Anderson is 0 for 1, walked his last time up. Luxury of having a 3 to nothing lead, and with Henderson and Lansford on deck, a couple of guys who can handle the bat pretty well. And as you mentioned, someone who can run the bases on at first base. First pitch to Henderson is low ball one. You mentioned Tony LaRussa will send the signs in to catcher Terry Steinbach. And in your picture there, Larry Heisel, the hitting coach with the glasses on, next to him, Gene Tennis. And Gene Tennis will send most of the signs into Pat Borders as to whether to pitch out or throw to first base. Those guys were Legion ball teammates in Portsmouth, Ohio. Larry Heisel and Gene Tennis, along with Al Oliver. Not a bad Legion team. There's Tennis flashing the sign. Borders has it. Let's see what they do. Low and away, two balls and no strikes. Tennis once wore the green and gold in, uh, for glory in his day. World Series hero. Two balls and no strikes. Could be a good pitch to do something with as Blankenship dives back to first base. And a close call over there. Now the, the, the Blue Jays know something was on because Blankenship broke for second base. See right there, you see that little juke step towards second. So they know something was on on that particular pitch. Let's see if LaRusa keeps it on. He took it off, and the pitch is outside 3-0. Three, oh. three balls and no strikes. Henderson, who walked his last time up, and by the way, as a result of that walk, has now reached base safely in 22 consecutive postseason games. What do you think Tony has in mind? 3-0. and oh. I wouldn't think anything fancy here. Take a pitch, try to get on base, and get that all-important fourth run. That's what, that's what he has designs on right now. You can get three off Jack Morris, but that next one is the big one for his team. He takes ball four. That is the third walk given up by Morris, the second this inning. He has labored and has thrown a lot of pitches, and runners now at first and second and one out, and Carney Lansford coming up. Jack Morris here in the fifth inning has already thrown 74 pitches, and here is Lansford, who has bounced out twice, once into a double play. You see, Antonio, Carney Lansford looking down for the sign, but he has the ability to just hit the ball to right field. He doesn't have to bunt to advance the runners. He's got such great bat control, so Tony LaRusso may very well say, hey, just take a shot to right. You don't have to bunt. And a pop fly in the short center field. Devon White comes in and makes the catch. And that's the second out here in the fifth inning. So Lansford going after the first pitch flies out. And there are two down and still two on. And again, another big out for Jack Morris. Here he's got Lansford trying to hit the ball to right field. And he buries that fastball right in above the trademark. Carney tried to inside out it, got hit on the hands. And that... That is a big out with Sierra coming up. Now you're wondering if the Blue Jays can do anything offensively. Jack Morris, despite the fact that he has flirted with big trouble tonight, trailing 3 0, has made some pitches to get out of innings. He's waiting for some offensive support that he's used to. But first, he has to dispose of Ruben Sierra, who fouls off the first pitch, strike one. Sierra 0 for 2. Lance Blankenship is on at second base. On at first is Ricky Henderson. Sierra, the switch hitter. 
nearly 100 points better as a right handed batter. So this is not the strong suit for Sierra. He's a low and slow high and hard guy. He throw hard fastballs up or breaking balls down. He's got slider speed back. Not fooled on the changeup. And Morris is ahead of him two strikes. There was the low and slow. And now on 0 and 2, you might see the high and hard. See with that big leg kick. Once a hitter commits himself with that big leg kick, he can't hold up. And it's also difficult to catch up with a high fastball from that position with a long stride. The 0 2 stays alive. Still no balls and two strikes. This is the first time in league championship history that we have matched two teams with the identical record. Both teams were 96 and 66, and the only other times that's happened in postseason history occurred in the World Series back in 1949 when the Dodgers and Yankees battled it out, and in 58 when the Yankees beat the Milwaukee Bra uh, Braves. Low one and two. I almost said Brewers, you know, and uh, <laughs> that's the team I followed with uh, Blaine Walsh and Earl Gillespie calling the games. A hammer, Hank Aaron. Think that team could hit with yeah. that lineup? A couple pretty good pitchers, too, I think. Spawn and Burdett. Matthews, Aaron, Adcock. Off the fist and a high pop up. Pat Waters could handle this one, and he makes the catch. So the A's lead two. And we are halfway through game one. It is three to nothing in favor of the. <laughs> Kelly Gruber, the first batter up here in the last of the fifth, hits a pop fly, calling for it is Blankenship. And he Sierra's ball coming in, but Blankenship made the catch, and there's one away in the fifth inning. There's our score, three to nothing. The A's have out hit the Blue Jays four to two. And Pat Waters, who popped up to the infield his first time, the batter. Dave Stewart is allowed but two singles. First four in the third inning. And a high fly ball hit deep to left field and way back and goal. postseason home run very inside conscious early in the count as a lot of hitters are they're ready for anything inside half early borders was ready for that one talk about being comfortable at the plate Pat borders has three hits against Dave Stewart in his career and two of them have been out of the ballpark and it is a three to one ball game all the runs coming on home runs here Lee the batter with one out and nobody on and this crowd is back in the game as Lee takes a strike one and one and from our angle all three on what pitchers would call bad breaking containers both the ones to McGuire and Steinbach and that one to Borders Two balls and a strike to Lee. Lee's problem in the past is that he hit the ball in the air too much. You don't want that from a number eight or number nine hitter, a diminutive infielder, but he has learned through Larry Heisel to hit the ball on the ground, and it's paid off for him. 2-1 pitch fouled out of play. A lot of hitting coaches play games with hitters like Manny Lee. Stand behind a batting cage and keep track of how many fly balls you hit in batting practice and how many ground balls. But Larry Heisel, more of a power hitter during his playing days, but that's what he tries to get Manny Lee to do. Slap the ball off the turf and use that speed. Still two balls and two strikes. You know, earlier this year, Manny Lee, in spring training at least, was fighting for a job with a rookie phenom, Eddie Zosky. So he had to win a job before establishing himself as a shortstop. You mentioned he has gold glove credentials. 
and had a good year at the plate as well. Took something off that pitch, and the count is full, Lily, three and two. This is an organization that develops so much young talent, and at their organizational meetings, Cito Gaston gets pressured to play the young players. Many wanted Derek Bell to play left field this year instead of Maldonado. He stuck with the veterans. 3-2 pitch and a line drive to center, and Willie Wilson, who was playing smartly and shallow in center field, makes the out. So there are a couple of balls that would have been hits were it not for good positioning by Joe Carter and the Jays right field and Wilson in center field there. Two down and the top of the order, Devon White. But the atmosphere is a lot more festive, Jim, here at Sky Dome. Waters has put the Blue Jays in the scoring column with his one out home run. White has walked twice. Out in front of that pitch, 0 and 1. The fans like the team seem a little more intent on trying to make something happen instead of wait for it to happen like they usually do. One and one to Devon White. You know, it was interesting, uh, Joe Carter talking about his experience last night at Maple Leaf Gardens. He said the crowd was quiet there. He played hockey, I think, a lot longer than baseball in this town. And it slapped through the hole in left field and a base hit for Devon White. And going to second and safe at second base. Great hustle by Devon White, and he'll call timeout. Trying to get a little spark, and Devon White may have provided it. Henderson bobbles this ball or takes a little to right there, bobbles it, and Devon White with those Edwin Moses-like strides rounds first and turns on the Jets right there. So the tying run is at the plate. Robbie Alomar, who's one for two, singled his last time up. single and an error charge to Ricky Henderson to allow White to move into scoring position with two down one and oh the count to Alomar there's a fastball right down the middle one and one the count one of the strengths of Roberto Alomar is as scouts will say good situational hitter throw the ball away right now he says a base hit gets our team a run Stewart pitches him away he'll try to take that pitch to left field just for a single lays off the high fastball and it's two and one two outs Joe Carter would be next Jack Morris looking for runs so as Jays can get back in the game Two and two to Alomar. So a critical juncture of this ball game is right here, with the A's leading three to one. Runner in scoring position, two outs, two and two with Carter on deck. Can Alomar keep it alive? Two two pitch and it's lined right at the second baseman Blankenship to retire the side, but the Blue Jays score a run. And it's now three to one after five, and we'll return to Sky Dome after this word from your local station. Even and the A's lead is now two runs, three to one, as we go to the sixth inning. Baines, McGuire, and Steinbach facing Jack Morris. In that last inning with the home run by Borders and the threat, gave the fans something to cheer for. And the first pitch to Baines is taken for ball one. Harold is two for two. DH, as we said, hit 40 points less this season than last. Fouls it off, one and one. Well, it sounded like he broke his bat. He's not going back for any lumber. Morris tried to get inside on him the first two at-bats, and Harold was able to 
fight it off and get it out to center field. That one he got way in there. Mark McGuire looks like he's trying to time Jack Morris's delivery to Harold Baines. It's a free at bat. And here comes the pitch <laughs> in the dirt. Two and one. Well, that's what hitters will do in the on deck circle. And you could see the end of that practice swing. That's been the big improvement in Mark McGuire is that relaxed right elbow. Like a lot of good golfers, they want a soft elbow. He tucks them in there, relaxed grip, more bat speed. Slap to shortstop. Manny Lee handles it. And there's one out. All right, right now, let's go to Leslie Visser. Leslie? Dick, I'm with a Canadian-born fan of the American pastime actor and director Michael J. Fox. Michael, what brings you here? Um, actually, I'm up in Toronto uh, making a film. I, st I just started today, rehearsals, and um, and my timing was excellent, and I uh, I was lucky enough to come into these seats. So, you, you are a baseball fan. What do you think of the Jays? I, I love my, my... This is my tribute to Jack Morris, by the way. <laughs> the in case anybody's wondering what I'm doing with this in my face. Um, <laughs> I think they're great. Obviously, we're in a bit of a spot here, but um, I, I hope they hang on. I'm going to be in Toronto until into November, so I'll be here for the whole thing. I'd like to see Atlanta come up and um, the Jays beat them in seven. If you Maybe they'll change your name to Michael Jays Fox. <laughs> Dick. Ooh, I don't okay. think I'll touch that one. Hey. Huh? What do you think? Well, he's already conceded the NLCS. <laughs> Pittsburgh will have a little something to do with that. <laughs> 1-1 one, one pitch to McGuire misses 2-1. and one. Well, November, the series should be over by then, I would think. Yeah. This postseason play, the stars are not only on the field, they're everywhere. McGuire with a big two run homer back in the second inning. Got it all started for the A's, and then Terry Steinbach followed suit with his home run. See him flex those pipes, those elbows into his sides. That's a little pre swing routine. Soften him up. Three balls and one strike to McGuire. One out in the A's sixth inning, game one of the American League Championship Series. And McGuire draws a walk. That is the fourth walk issued by Jack Morris. If you've just joined us, this is game one here in Toronto. Mark McGuire with a two run homer in the second inning, and that was followed by Terry Steinbach's long home run over the left field fence that made it three to nothing and it stayed that way until Pat Borders hit a solo home run with one out in the fifth inning. That's the story as Morris and Stewart duel in game one. Here's Steinbach one for two with his homer first time up. Strike one to him. See the obvious effort by that swing. Terry Steinbach trying to hit the ball in the hole between first and second. You see him almost looking that way at the same time he's swinging in that direction. And a ground ball hit to Lee. Gets one, gets two, and that is the second double play turned over by the A's. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It's three to one. Morris gives him support. <laughs> Toronto Blue Jays have big hitters coming up here in the sixth inning. Big crowd here at Sky Dome, 51,039. The fifth largest baseball crowd in Sky Dome history. Joe Carter, who's one for two, leading off, takes a fastball inside. Winfield and Olaru to follow. In the Toronto bullpen, two starters not figuring the start here. Right-hander Todd Stottlemyre and the lefty is Jimmy Key. Let up pitch and right back to the mound. Short hop by Stewart and he disposes of Carter for the first down. Well, we've been looking at Roger Clemens scouting report tonight. What do you say about Dave Winfield? Dave Winfield, he stands very deep in the batter's box. His feet are real antsy. Uh, he seems not to like the ball inside, the fastball inside, but as of late, the last two months of the season, he's been getting around on that ball and hitting it extremely hard. You must keep the ball down. Fastball, slider, what have you, keep it down. If you get it up, he'll drive the ball. That's what you said before. Uh, Carter doesn't like the ball away, and this guy doesn't like it in tight. 
He's 0 for 2 tonight. But they hit the ball hard last time up to Ruben Sierra in right field on the warning track. Takes the ball. But Roger Clemens pointed out something interesting, and it's a characteristic of good hitters. If you consistently pound a good hitter inside, eventually he's going to say, I'm going to get ready for that. And that's why Roger says late in the year, Winfield has been a little more ready for that inside gas. He got one out over the plate and fouls it straight back, and it's one and one. Had a lot of terms in baseball in the recent years. The setup man, and they'll be prominent in this World Series out of the bullpen. This inning, I think, could be called the bridge inning for Tony La Russa. If Dave Stewart can get through the sixth, he will bridge the game to the bullpen with good pitchers like Jeff Parrott, Jeff Russell, and then Dennis Eckerson. Two balls and a strike. Stewart has allowed four hits. Three singles and a home run. Home run to Pat Borders. Blue Jays have left four men on base. Trailing by two runs here in the last of the sixth inning. And a drive hit deep to left field. Way back. Forget it. It's a home run for Dave Winfield. just become the oldest player ever to hit a home run in postseason play. And another fork ball, all four long balls tonight off breaking pitches. And he got those powerful arms extended. Pitch hangs inside a little bit. As soon as that ball hit the bat, Winfield just began his trot immediately. Sweet sound to a hitter. And John Ora, the batter, takes a strike. And when we say PM, we don't mean Winfield for the evening. It's Prime Minister, yeah. of course, up here in Canada. It's a pretty nice evening for him tonight, though. Three to two, the score. All the runs coming on home runs. And Dave Winfield at age 41, and he turned 41 just a few days ago on October 3rd, the anniversary of Bobby Thompson's pennant-winning homer for the Giants in 51. Oldest player in postseason history ever to hit one out. No balls and two strikes to Olaru. And he lifts a fly ball to left field. Ricky Henderson camps under it. He's got it for the second out. But the crowd is still buzzing over Dave Winfield's big blast. Take a look how Dave Stewart tried to work Dave Winfield. Here's the first pitch. You see Steinbach sitting inside. And that just misses. Breaking pitch, fouled straight back. Comes back inside again with a fastball, and now another breaker, but this one hangs. Over 400 feet. All the pitches right around the plate. Here's Candy Maldonado. Strike one to Candy. The fact that those pitches are on breaking balls significant because pitchers who have pitched a great deal, like Dave Stewart and Jack Morris, a lot of innings you tend to hang that breaking ball a little bit more later in the year than in the early part of the season. No balls and two strikes. That was Kelly Downs warming up in the Oakland bullpen. No balls and two strikes. strikes out as Stewart fiercely strikes him out but he gave up another home run ball to that man Dave Winfield to cut the A's lead to three to two. Texas encouraged his teammates to double play stay with me they responded with two home runs they got the crowd back in the game and now just one run away there's new life in Toronto and that's what you look for in guys like Morris and Stewart here's Morris trying to encourage his team get me back in the game Stewart after that last strikeout trying to protect that lead and encourage his teammates. He's saying, hey, get me one more. Get me one more, we won't lose. Willie Wilson leading off the bottom third of the A's batting order here in the top of the seventh inning. Three runs, four hits, and one error for the A's. Two, five, and all for the Blue Jays. And Wilson fouls it off one and one. 
That's what pitchers like Morris and Stewart mean to their team. You, know, you go out there with stuff. We talk about Cone and Darling and Mike Moore and Guzman have better stuff, but these guys do something during a game to provide games like this and inspire their teammates. He popped up in foul territory and a play for Kelly Gruber, one out. Well, you said it early. The A's several times were within one pitch, maybe, of really opening up this game and perhaps knocking out Jack Morris. But he got the big outs that he had to get. And Toronto has come back offensively with homers by Borders in the fifth and Winfield in the sixth to make a game of it three to two. Boy, and don't think he doesn't know that. He knows the value of that extra run when you look down in the Oakland bullpen and see the record that they've compiled this year. Mike Bordick 0 for 2 the batter. Here's the 1-0 pitch from Morris in the dirt. But you have to realize, of course, looking at the numbers, 3-2 to two into the seventh inning, there'll be a setup man. And you know this is Dennis Eckersley territory coming up if it remains 3-2. to two. Now, Most of the time against both of these ball clubs, it becomes about a seven-inning game. Toronto has Ward and Hinky, and Oakland has a cast, and then Eckersley. Most people in assessing the bullpens feel that Toronto may have the edge because they have two closers in Ward and Henke versus only the Eck. Nobody better than the Eck, but Ward probably the best setup man in the American League. Ground ball, and it's a fair ball. Glove nicely by Gruber, the throw in time. And the Blue Jays fighting to stay in this game, and the crowd appreciate it has not hit well this year but a play that could be a game saver that's a double if Gruber doesn't flag it down but again without swinging the bat well this year he has continued to perform like a gold glove third baseman and that's not an easy thing to do a lot of players take those batting woes into the field with it not Kelly Gruber and there are two down here in the seventh inning Lance Blankenship has struck out and walked tonight Looks at ball one. You mentioned Ward as a setup man, but in the division clinching victory against the Tigers, it was Ward who got the save and came in for Henke. That's the advantage that Cito Gaston has, is that Ward on a lot of ball clubs would be a closer. There's a breaking ball for a strike, one and one. Lance Blankenship, who got the nod to start in the infield over the veteran Walt Weiss. Weiss would have been the shortstop, and Bordick would have been the second baseman. Tony LaRusa going a different way as a pop-up in the shallow right field. Alomar waves everyone away and makes the catch to retire the side in order. Middle of the seventh inning, Gruber with a fine defensive play. It's 3-2 to two Athletics. Imagine a Kelly Gruber gets a big hand from the crowd after the sparkling defensive play leading off here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Trailing Dave Stewart 3-2 and the fastball hit in the air to right field. Ruben Sierra coming over toward the line and makes the catch for out number one. At Borders who started Toronto on the comeback trail with this one out home run in the fifth inning. Well hit by Borders. There it was, his first postseason home run. And then Winfield followed with a one-out homer in the sixth. It's three to two, and here is Borders, one for two on the night. Third baseman Lansford is guarding the line, and even with the bag at third, as the first pitch brushes him back for ball one. In the A's bullpen is right-hander Jim Corsi, who is effective against both right-handers and particularly left-handed batters. And he's up for another reason. If the Blue Jays get a base runner and Tony La Russa decides to make a move, he's probably the best guy before Eckersley had holding runners on. He can deliver the ball to Steinbach rather quickly. Hey, a stolen base could be major in this game. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Fastball line to right center field coming on over Sierra, and he makes a fine running catch. 
Ruben Sierra robbed Pat Borders of extra bases with that defensive play in right center field. And there are two down. Again, in the game of baseball, I think where there's been more improvement than any other area in the athletes is the speed of outfielders. You used to think of outfielders as a couple of big sluggers on the corners and a center fielder like Willie Mays. Now it seems like all the outfielders have good speed and good ability as Sierra proved on that catch right there. Big thing for outfield speed is to cut off those extra base hits. Here's Manny Lee 0 for 2. He takes low ball one, three to two to score the A's lead. But keep in mind that the Blue Jays won only six games this year that they trailed after six innings of play. That was the fewest amount of comebacks from the sixth inning on in the American League. Half swing and a foul. One and one the count to lead. And they're playing a team that's just the opposite. The Blue Jays are, are better in these kind of games when they hold the one round lead. The A's are the... The team that has been the, the team that's come from behind to win a lot of games. Two down, nobody on. Taken. Fastball for a strike. One and two. And Lansford, who was playing even with the bag and then in, now moves back with two strikes. There's Carney, and you see the way the infield aligns itself. going to be a base hit but Ricky Henderson was playing in perfect position in left field and he will hold Manny Lee to a single once again outfield positioning playing a big role in the game and that is hit number six for the Blue Jays and Manny Lee showing the improvement he's made as a hitter takes that ball the other way Eckersley not ready to come in yet but getting in position when that phone rings he has a routine, and Dennis Eckersley right now, the most comfortable he could be in the bullpen. And with two out and a runner at first base, Devon White, the batter. He has been on base three times tonight, two walks and a single. So Dave Stewart has yet to retire, the Blue Jays center fielder. So the tying run is at first base with two away. did not run much this season only six stolen bases and a check swing but he went around says Don Denkinger and it's strike one troubled with the knee injury but it's a it's a free roll for Cito Gaston with two out you send Manny Lee and if he if he gets thrown out you have White leading off and Tony LaRusso aware of that he's sending the signs into Steinbach to pay close attention to Manny Lee Lee does not have much of a lead See, that's, that's one sign that managers have come up with. A step off and bluff, and the other one will be throw to first. The other one will be slide step or pitch out. They, managers really control the running game more so than pitchers and catchers did years ago. And you'll notice with Eckersley, it's the step off and bluff. Mm -hmm. That's his favorite way. There's the time-honored way. What uh, what managers are saying to pitchers and catchers nowadays is you pitch and catch, and we'll handle the rest of it. Don't worry about when to pitch out or what the counts are, because they pay very close attention to that, and they watch the third base coach, see if they pick up a sign. You like that idea? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think the two guys that know more about it are the pitcher and the catcher, but the game has changed. He bluffed to go at a ground ball, hit to Blankenship. And that'll retire the side. There was one hit and one left and a fine defensive play by Ruben Sierra. We move to the eighth inning of a one-run game. That's been the scoring in this game. McGuire and Steinbach with back-to-back -back home runs in the second. With the runner on base, Borders and Winfield with solo home runs. And that's where we are, three to two. As the A's come up in the eighth inning with the top of the order, Ricky Henderson, Carney Lansford, and Ruben Sierra against Jack Morris. Morris has allowed two runs on six hits. Three runs, I should say, on six hits. And Henderson, the batter, has walked twice, 0 for 1 officially. 
fastball for a strike, and he's got a good fastball into the eighth inning here. Yeah, if you like pitching, this is a beautiful game to watch. Now, it's not Nolan Ryan, Roger Clemens, blow people away game, but it's two guys grinding it out. This one knowing that one more run I probably don't win, and the other one trying to hang on to that. Fork ball misses, and it's one and one to Henderson. That's Jack Morris's line. He had a rough inning in the second. Struggled throughout, but has come up with the big out when he's needed it. What a game pitcher he's been. Down three to nothing. Has continued to hold the A's at bay while his team has chipped back with a couple of home runs. So we mentioned some of the names at the beginning of this game, and you go back to to Gibson and Catfish Hunter and name all the great ones you want and they have that characteristic if you do not get them early in the game oftentimes you do not get them at all. Line drive to right field Carter right there one out. Game three of the National League Championship Series. The Braves and Pirates, they move to Three River Stadium. will come your way Friday at 8.30 Eastern time. Tom Glavin, 20 and 8. He struggled after he had won the 20th game. Tim Wakefield, the rookie knuckleballer. Sean McDonough and Tim McCarver will have the action for you Friday night right here on CBS. Carney Lansford with a soft roller to third base. Kelly Gruber handles it. Two out. Right now, let's check in with Leslie Visser. Leslie? Dick, Ruben Sierra is thrilled to be playing in his first postseason game on this, his 27th birthday. He'd be even happier if he could wear the number 21. He idolized Roberto Clemente as a kid. Unfortunately, Mike Moore has that number. So what he does to commemorate Clemente, he has a little diamond ring on his ear with the number 21. Dick? Hey, Roberto Clemente, uh, I'm sure that he is the uh, childhood and adult hero of so many Puerto Ricans. Mm -hmm. Tragic way in which his life was taken, trying to help the less fortunate in the plane crash. And I think that's uh, one of the sentiments in Pittsburgh with Sierra being a free agent. The attraction there with him being a right fielder and may, maybe giving him a little bit of the flair of Clemente. I don't know that anyone will ever play the game like Roberto Clemente did. You had a chance to see him there. Great style and flair. Hit the ball to the opposite field. He was a great situational hitter. Whatever you needed, you got from him. Yeah, his situation was whenever they threw the ball, he hit it. it <laughs> right. like every time I saw it. <laughs> one ball and one strike to Sierra. Cito Gaston. With his team trailing by a run. Here in the eighth inning. Morris wanted that pitch. Now he's looked in a couple of times, and what pitchers will tell you will happen. Sometimes umpires begin the game with a more of an open liberal strike zone when it gets down near the end maybe it tightens up a little bit you know they're human too they go with the ebb and flow of the game you can't call that thing like a machine and Stewart and Morris have peaked in a little bit more at Denkinger breaking ball rolled foul down the right field line and it's 2 2 Morris has allowed only one hit in the last five innings and will be six innings uh, if he can dispose of Sierra here. Two balls and two strikes. And a fastball popped up. Alomar. And a 1 2 3 inning. Toronto still trails, and Dave Stewart going back out to work. Jim and I will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game. Chevrolet $1,000 in the player's behalf to the Special Olympics. In the A's bullpen, Jeff Russell, who was acquired from Texas. And Jim Corsi was up before. Corsi, the guy we mentioned, would come into the game with a man on base to possibly hold someone on. And Russell had problems with his elbow, and it was questionable as to whether he would be ready. Now, he was the chief closer for the Rangers, but he is happy enough to be a setup man for Dennis Eckersley and perhaps 
get a championship ring, but he's been feeling all right, and so Russell becomes a key man for the A's late-inning pitching hopes. Good two-inning outing the last day of the regular season, and that what that's what convinced Tony La Russa, as well as Jeff Russell that he was okay. That's got to be a different feeling when you're accustomed to closing games, and they say, here, now just come in, get us a couple of outs, and we'll turn it over to the best in the business. Isn't it amazing as Tony La Russa was a really puzzled as to which players would be healthy that in that last series and we were in Oakland for that Milwaukee series that uh, Ricky Henderson and Steinbach and Russell then pitched and a lot of the ailing A's all of a sudden came around at the end. Hey, injuries that might hurt and ache a little bit in May and June somehow when postseason play comes around you don't feel the pain nearly as much. Well here are the Blue Jays trying to get even against Dave Stewart in the bottom of the eighth inning. Roberto Alomar takes ball one it'll be Alomar Carter and Winfield three tough customers for Dave Stewart good fastball by Stewart there you see Carney Lansford guarding the line and in a couple of steps at third base and McGuire also guarding the line for an extra base hit at first Two and one to Alomar. And oftentimes that move is overdone when you have a hitter that does not pull the ball, ball very often. You see teams guard the line anyway. But against Alomar, perfect. Because he can take the outside pitch down that line and pull the inside. And you want to eliminate the double right here. Fastball fouled out of play. Into the left field stands. And it's two balls and two strikes. Alomar with a single and a stolen base has now hit safely in all six LCS games that he's played. Two two pitch and it's hard hit but right at Mike Bordick and Alomar is out one gone in the eighth inning. This game holds up like this 3-2. It'd be nice like some of the old heavyweight fights you used to watch and the two fighters came out afterwards and held up their hand. I mean, to watch Stewart and Morris battle, to me, enjoying pitching anyway, has been a real joy to watch these guys just grind it out, out at a time. Doesn't get any better than this. Stewart sailed along to the fifth inning, leading 3 to nothing, gave up a couple of home runs. He led his club in gopher balls this year with 25. But he has settled down. Joe Carter fouls it back for strike one. And in the bullpen, the X starting to loosen up. It's been the most automatic thing in the Bay Area since George Blanda used to kick extra points. He's even more automatic <laughs> than George. The 0 1 pitch to Carter in tight. One ball and one strike, and of course the debate will rage after the season. As far as the MVP of the American League in the Cy Young Award, and whether Eckersley deserves both, or the MVP award, and the debate has already started to rage. Depends on whether you favor hitters or pitchers. See this pitching sequence here. We talked about Carter being ready inside. Stewart will blow him off the plate inside and then go back outside to get him out. And he jammed him and a high pop-up shortstop Bordick going back. He's got it. So Dave Stewart has made some good pitches to Alomar and Carter and has retired the first two batters here in the eighth inning. Let's take a look back to the sixth inning when Dave Winfield became the oldest player in Major League history to the postseason home run. Home run trapped by a 6'7 former basketball star at the University of Minnesota. Could have played football as well, I guess. They talk about today's two-sport athletes like Deion Sanders. Winfield drafted in three. So Winfield already has made moves to erase memories of that terrible 1981 postseason when he was with the Yankees. Takes ball one. I he was two for 13 against the A's in the LCS and a dismal one for 22 in the World Series. One and oh the count. Stewart trying to end things in the eighth inning. Good pitch. Knee high on the corner and it's one and one. 
can tell mostly fastballs also in the latter part of the ball game. Veteran pitchers know that 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 breaking ball we saw some hangers earlier much more vulnerable to hang that than get by with a good fastball and Stewart's going mostly with the heat. Here's the one one to Winfield and it's lined to right center field and that's going to drop and go all the way to the wall for extra bases. Winfield loses his helmet and will stop at second with a stand up double. So the tying run is in scoring position with two out here in the eighth inning. Stewart keeps the ball away. One thing that does, even though it's hit hard, a pitch away will stay in the ballpark most of the time. He lost the helmet here. 41 years old. Young. LaRusa going to the mound. He's got John O'Root, so he's got he had Corsi up before. And then we saw Jeff Russell. Yeah, Eckersley uh, also is not just a nine inning guy anymore, but we're going to see Russell. And a hand for Dave Stewart. Boy, has he pitched well tonight. He deserved it. Coming in the pitch for the Russell is the new pitcher for the A's. He made eight appearances with them after being acquired from Texas at the end of August. Hard thrower with a good breaking ball. And part of this matchup might be Olerud 0 for 4 against Russell. He's almost a 500 hitter against Eckersley. Tying run is at second with two down. Goes after the fastball and fouls it off for a strike. A lot of people are saying that that's why the A's made the trade for Jeff Russell. They know that they might lose Sierra through free agency. We've got Mike Witt, the starter, who will not, Bobby Witt not figure to start. In this series, Russell, the key man for them. 0 and 1. One ball, one strike. Olaru tonight, 0 for 2 and walk. That was against Dave Stewart. Sit down there for two hours and 40 minutes as a relief pitcher, and you know you come in and one man is your entire ball game. That's all Jeff Russell's being asked to get out. Breaking ball, miss two and one. On deck is Candy Maldonado. Well, you're getting a, a good look at the discipline of a young hitter like Jack, uh, John Olerud. He will not chase a lot of pitches out of the strike zone. He gets hitters in a lot of he pitchers in a lot of favorable counts like he is right now. Two balls and one strike. Breaking ball on the corner. Two and two. A's had a three to nothing lead thanks to back to back home runs in the second inning. But Tony LaRusso has had to sweat this one out. And Jack Morris looking for his mates to get him the kind of run support he enjoyed this year. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Fouled away as Olerud continues to battle Russell. See, Tony LaRusso, you can almost read his lips. He's saying, should we move him over a little? Should we get Ricky a little closer to the line? Because Olerud waits. Russell throws the ball hard, and that's an area where some of those foul balls have been going. Looking ahead to the next batter, if Olerud stays alive, Maldonado, 0 for 1 against Russell, but against Dennis Eckersley, if you're interested, 3 for 10, including a home run. So they may not want Eck to face Maldonado. Two balls and two strikes. drama continues to exist here at the Sky Dome. It's lived up to its billing with Stewart and Morris tonight. Everything we expected it would be. You, know, you don't look for those guys to, to pitch a one to nothing shutout, but you anticipate a game like this and they've given it to us. Stewart works seven and two thirds innings. Allowed two runs and is responsible for Winfield on its second. And a base hit up the middle. Winfield rounding third, and he'll score the tying run.
kept it alive with a two-out double. And now this single by John Olroot, and it's a 3-3 game. You can see the spiked curveball. Jeff Russell throws that knuckle curve and the discipline of John Olroot fouling off those outside fastballs. And he's able to wait on the breaking ball with that timely hit. Olerud out of the game. Derek Bell will pinch run for him. Tony LaRussa out to the mound. Maldonado, the scheduled hitter, has had success against Eckersley. And not so much in his one at bat against Russell. All business on that face. He knows he has to go out there for it. One more inning, and you can see by some of the gestures from Tony La Russa right here, pay very close attention to Derek Bell at first base. I'll tell you, this Blue Jay team clawed and scratched and hung in there. They got back on two home runs and a two-out rally here in the eighth inning. But they lived up to Jack Morris's exhortations to hang in there. Here's Maldonado, 0 for 3. Wing and a miss, strike one, and this is the loudest we have ever heard the Sky Dome crowd. You don't want to hang too much on one game, but if you think back to the 86 postseason, you saw what one game did to devastate the California Angels. One good game here for Toronto can be just what they need to give them a feeling to get over that hump. Two strikes to Maldonado. Derek Bell, the pinch runner, is on at first base. Probably gamble and steal right here if you're Bell. You think Russell's going to throw Maldonado curveball in the dirt? And then again, you, you see the close attention Tony La Russa pays to base runners, so he might say, well, let's pitch out if he is going. Bell had seven stolen bases in nine tries this year. 3-3 the score. The go-ahead run is on at first base. He did not go. There was the pitch out. You're right. And a good time for it, and it's 1-2. and two. Hacker, the third base coach. Bluff to first base. I got a feeling Bell might have been going on that pitch. He's trying to measure Russell. And of course, your legs are always a little tense. You've been sitting on the bench the entire game. You can see him going back and forth, trying to loosen him up and sneaking out just a little farther onto that outside the sliding pit onto the turf. Pitch is taken for a ball. Two and two to Maldonado. The guessing game. Game one of the American League Championship Series. Three to nothing lead into the fifth inning, but the Blue Jays have come back by virtue of two home runs and a two out rally here in the eighth inning. Ground ball, third base, Lansford. He'll go to second for the force and will go down to the ninth inning. But the Blue Jays have tied it up thanks to John Olrud's base hit. Three three the score as we move to the top of the ninth inning. The A's with all their runs in the second. The Blue Jays with a run in the fifth, sixth, and in the eighth inning, two out. Winfield's double and Olrud single, and Harold Baines, who's had a big night at the plate, two for three with a pair of singles up the middle, leading off and taking ball one from Jack Morris. Maybe.
breaking ball hit deep to right field, close to the line, looking up, and it's gone. Harold Baines has hit a home run to break the tie for the A's. Third hit of the night, and the third home run by the Oakland A's, and it is now a 4-3 to three ball game. And have they quieted this throng? Uh, think back to the fastball that Dave Stewart threw Dave Winfield. He hit it hard, but it stayed in the ballpark. Morris comes back with another hanging breaking ball. And very vulnerable late in the game, and Baines catches up with it. Five hits for the A's. Three of them have been for home runs. Mark McGuire shoots one down to Gruber at third. He makes the play, and there's one out. So now Dennis Eckersley will be getting ready to come in in the bottom of the ninth inning. With the A's leading by at least four to three. And if you're looking ahead to the Blue Jays ninth inning, it'll be the bottom third of their order. Ruber, Borders, and Manny Lee, the scheduled hitters. You see that 4-3 score, and we've been talking about the importance of giving up that fourth run to Oakland. Fast ball and a strike to Terry Steinbach. The best record in baseball when they get four and the best man in the bullpen to come in and hold the lead. In tight to Steinbach and Dennis Eckersley backstage getting ready to come on to center stage. In the ninth inning. Ooh. And there's a line drive hit to Maldonado in left field, and there are two down in the A's ninth inning. But a leadoff home run by Harold Baines, the left-handed bat that Tony La Russa had hoped would come alive against the right-handed pitchers, and has he ever, with two singles and a home run to break the tie here in the ninth inning. Oftentimes, with a bullpen like Toronto, Cito Gaston would say, let's go to that bullpen. But no way he was going to take Jack Morris out of this game. Broken bat, slow roller. Manny Lee gloves it. And not in time. Willie Wilson beats the throw. And he's aboard with two outs. Thirty-seven years old, you never tell by the way he got down the baseline. Get rewarded for running hard right from the start because right there you see the ball almost slip out of Manny Lee's glove, out of the webbing, and it was just that little movement took him a little longer to grip the ball, and Wilson running hard all the way ties that play. So Wilson aboard with a two-out infield hit, and here is Mike Bordick, 0 for 3. Wilson had 28 stolen bases this year. Derek Bell, who ran for Olerud, moved into right field, and Joe Carter took over at first base. He played first toward the end of this season, so he is not new to the position. And an important base runner right there, Wilson, hustling that ball out. You're going to see Morris pay a lot of attention to it. Tony LaRusso would love to get one more run into scoring position, but Bordick has been a 300 hitter. Wilson does not have a big lead. He takes a strike. Does Bordick. 0-1. Five home runs tonight in this game. And that's as many as were hit in both the 1990 and the 91 American League Championship Series. Three by the A's and two by the Blue Jays. But it's Baines Homer, the big one right now. There's a pitch out and a bluff throw to first base. Wilson wasn't going. Well, if you could draw up a score for a game between Morris and Stewart, that's what it would be, four to three. That's sort of their history of those type of games. Now, in the upcoming games, we, we've got guys with no hit potential going out there. Cone. Darling in game three for the A's. Cone tomorrow night. And there goes Willie Wilson. Pitch is swung on to throw to second base, and Wilson is in. 
So Willie Wilson with a stolen base. And he's in scoring position. And even on this throw, Pat Borders got a quick, nice going glance from Jack Morris. Here's a tough pitch to handle. Fork ball in the dirt. He backhands it, comes up, throws it right on target. Wilson with a good jump. That's that high leg kick of Jack Morris. And even though that goes against the catcher, that base was stolen on the pitcher. Count is one and two to Bordick, who offered it the pitch. Hayes looking for an insurance run here in the top of the ninth inning. Hop fly down the right field line. Derek Bell is there, and he makes the catch and will go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Here is the home run by Harold Baines that broke the tie. Can the Blue Jays come back? This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Four to three in the bottom of the ninth inning. The A's lead and enter Dennis Eckersley. 51 saves and 54 opportunities. who set the standards for relief pitchers to come, I would say. And the game sets up exactly the way the A's come to the ballpark every day and hope it does, because only one time have they lost a game when they were leading in the ninth inning, and that's after they already had the division clinch when it didn't mean anything. So that's what we mean about this guy being automatic. Look at these incredible numbers over the last four years. The walk-to-strikeout ratio is unbelievable. That's over a four-year period of time. And when you allow only seven base runners in nine innings, there's not another pitcher in baseball that has that kind of ratio. Kelly Gruber leading off 0 for 3, but Gruber is 3 for 13. Lifetime against Dennis Eckersley. Pat Borders is on deck. 4 to 3. Swing and a miss and a strike. How important is that first strike as we see Lansford at third base for Eckersley to get over? Most hitters will say that's the pitch you have a chance to hit. There's a pop-up drifting out of play, and Eckersley is ahead of Gruber 0-2. The A's won 65 of 69 games in which Dennis Eckersley appeared this year, and that's why a lot of people are saying MVP. I'll vote for that. I really think he is. I know there's that controversy about pitcher versus hitter, but no one affects whether his team wins or loses more than the short reliever. No one's done it better than Eckersley. He has a bad day. His team loses. No balls and two strikes for Gruber. Eckersley did not have a blown save until August the 8th, and then he had two in a row in the last series against Milwaukee. And before that, Texas. So he did not finish on a high note necessarily. And it's one and two to Gruber. I think after the A's had the division wrapped up, the, the same concentration intensity is not there. Just missing outside. Borderline pitch, and it's two and two. Valiant game pitched by Jack Morris. Ground ball to the left side, Bordick. Long throw, diving, but not in time. Gruber is out. And there's one gone in the ninth inning. See what Mike Bordick does on this play. He knows Gruber has pretty good speed, and oftentimes you'll see infielders shuffle their feet to get in position. Bordick said, I don't have time. Plant that back foot, make a strong throw. Pat Borders with one out, the batter. Borders homered in the fifth inning and then was robbed of extra base hits by Ruben Sierra in the seventh. First pitch taken, ball one. The last time that Borders faced Dennis Eckersley, he hit a home run against X. Swing and a miss. Ed Sprague has a bat and he will pinch it for Manny Lee one of the backup catchers and a versatile player. 
Fouled out of play, and Eckersley is ahead of Borders, one and two. We mentioned the first pitch you get from Eckersley may be the best and the only one you get to hit. Why is that? Because once he gets you 0-1, one, one strike, each pitch gets a little farther toward the outside corner. He takes it off the fat of the bat, and he gets you to chase a lot of those close pitches. Here's the one-two pitch. Lays off the fastball. Two balls and two strikes to Pat Borders. So while Borders, in his most recent at-bat against Eckersley, hit a home run, he also has struck out four times against him. And he hits a weak roller to shortstop. Bordick with the play, and there are two down. And the Blue Jays are down to their last out. And Ed Sprague will come up and pinch hit for Manny Lee with two out. American out of Stanford, a top draft pick of the Blue Jays a few years ago, and the one guy on their bench that can represent some power and can handle the ball down in the strike zone. Those were his numbers this year. Sprague played in 22 games for the Blue Jays. So he is the last hope with two down, four to three to score. Eckersley trying to save it for Jeff Russell, who would be the winning pitcher. First pitch in there for a strike. Remember the home run by Kirk Gibson. That's one of the very few failures that this man has had. Loaded with successes, but with two outs, Sprague lines a single to center field. So there's hope for the Blue Jays with a two-out base hit. Keep in mind, they tied the game in the eighth inning after two are out. And that'll bring up Devon White at the top of the order. And White has had good success against Eckersley. He's three for nine. And Alfredo Griffin has gone in the run for Ed Spray. A rarity falls behind one strike and goes out and gets that pitch off the outside corner to keep his team alive. veteran infielder See, the pinch running situation here I think is to score on an extra base hit I'd be surprised if Griffin tried to steal with white at the plate if you were down to the bottom of the order and you didn't have anybody that could drive the ball in the gap you'd say okay let's let's steal but here's a, a player older doesn't play on a regular basis and Terry Steinbach one of the best at throwing out runners you don't want to end the game that way you don't often say you need two hits to beat an Eckersley but with Alomar on deck that may be your best percentage and a broken bat pop fly Mike Bordick is there makes the catch and the ball game is over and Dennis Eckersley has come in and saved it for Jeff Russell, who pitched only one-third of an inning, gave up a base hit, oddly enough, but he gets to be the winner, and Jack Morris the loser, and it was the home run by Harold Baines in the ninth inning that did the Blue Jays and Jack Morris in after Toronto had rallied from a 3-0 deficit. 4-3 to three the final score, and the A's winning on the road, lead 1-0 in the ALCS. The Thongs lead the series 1-0 with a 4-3 victory over the Toronto Blue Jays. Harold Baines with a home run in the ninth inning. Five home runs in game one. And the Chevrolet player of the game is Harold Baines. He had three hits in all. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 in his behalf to the Special Olympics. Right now, let's send you down to Leslie Visser. Leslie? Dick, it was a great night for designated hitters, but no one had a better effort than Harold Baines. Harold, congratulations to you. What about the home run? Uh, it, was, it was exciting for us and, and especially exciting for me whenever I can play a big part in Oakley's winning. What happened? Uh, I was a slider up over the plate. Uh, I was looking to drive the ball. Uh, I don't consider myself a home run hitter, but it, that was a great time to hit one. Well, congratulations. Got your first win on the road. Back to you, Dick. All right, Leslie, thank you very much. So the A's have now won 13 of their last 14 LCS games. Homer away doesn't seem to matter to them. 
some full commission. Out last the Blue Jays, maybe put them behind the eight ball again. And so for Jim Cott and Leslie Visser, I'm Dick Stockton saying so long from Sky Dome in Toronto with a final score, the A's four and the Blue Jays three. CBS Sports coverage of Game 1 of the 1992 American League Championship Series is brought to you by MasterCard. Master the moment with a card that's accepted at nearly 10 million places worldwide. Sprint, not just another phone company. And by Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. You've been watching Major League Baseball on CBS Sports, home of the biggest games in baseball, the 1992 World Series. And tonight, on a night of long balls, five home runs, the last one by Harold Baines was the big one as Oakland takes a one to nothing lead.